Hi, I'm Larry Tombaugh from Streeter, Illinois, and today we're taking a look at this vermicompost tea brewer. Uh, I like to think it's a 500 gallon hot tub, but it's got uh, about 16 fans, uh, German fans, 12 in the bottom and four, one in each of these canisters. And uh, for the last several years, we've been uh, building our own biological pro uh, product. And what happens is we put 20 pounds of a composted dairy manure that we bring in from uh, dairy farms in Oregon. They take five organic dairies that they know the rations are on, so they're pretty consistent. And they lightly compost that, being really cognizant that the heat's not overreacting to kill off the microbes. Then once they've composted that, they run it through worms, which worms have the ability to concentrate nutrients about seven times. So we get a really good product that comes in kind of like coffee grounds. And um, as long as you keep it with some moisture, uh, it's going to last quite a while. So we bring it in, put 20 pounds in each of these, and then we put lids in the, the tops of these canisters. And we add nine pounds of a, a carbohydrate uh, food source that helps to stimulate the microbes. I'm going to turn the fan on so you can kind of see uh, the activity that we get there. So we've got this set up so that we actually have hangers that if we want to do a half batch and only do 250 gallons, we can do a half batch down. Uh, we've got this set up that we catch rainwater. That's not a necessity, but you know we're just making it as pure as we can. Uh, when we don't have a, a lot of rain like the last six weeks, then we use uh, our well water, which is maybe pretty hard water and has a high sulfur ratio. But this works out pretty well. And we're going to bubble it for 18 to 24 hours. A minimum would be about 18 hours, 24. You could go longer than that. But uh, we like to get it out, and then we run it through a strainer to make sure everything can go through a 100 mesh screen. Um, a lot of uh, sprayers and uh, companies call for 80 mesh. We just kind of go over. Uh, it's no big problem with this, but we like to just be sure none of the nozzles plug and do a 100 mesh screen. So we brew this, and once we turn it down, at the time it's completed, we have about 92% uh, are aerobic microbes and 8% are anaerobes. If we're going to do something like in a, uh, a residue digester program where the anaerobes are the ones that really eat the, the high uh, cellulose products, then we'll shut the fans off for maybe six, eight hours to increase the ratio of uh, anaerobes to aerobes. This, uh, this compost tea is, is really pretty amazing. Uh, the company out in California came up with it about 1990, got the patents on the, the process with these tanks and, and so forth. And in some studies that we've had pretty amazing results, um, one of our studies out in Colorado had a half of an 80 acre field put the compost tea on and we, we are ab able to reduce the uh, Palmer amaranth pigweed type weeds by about 60%. The reason being that pigweeds grow up and are developed in the desert. So they're anaerobic environments when they're developed. And we had such a high propensity of aerobes that they just killed off the seeds and didn't feed the, the weeds. The thing about this product is we've had it DNA tested and uh, we thought that we had only about 350 to 1,000 different strains of colony forming fungal units. That's the, the fancy way of saying bugs. Well, we had it DNA tested uh, like nine times so far, and it always comes back with over 4,000 uh, microbes, which means that one milliliter, which isn't very much, has between 50 billion and 100 billion bugs in it. The whole idea is we're trying to replenish the soil biology. Uh, the soil that we had in virgin prairies just had, you know, 10 foot tall the prairie grass and just unbelievable amounts of microbes, but we farmed that out of it by plowing it, tilling it, and different things. And we've tried a number of products over the years that had 10 different uh, bugs, 36 bugs, but what we've come to the conclusion is this product with over 4,000 strains, uh, they're all living together, they're all compatible. If we get things from other companies, we're not sure that we're going to have like-minded bugs to get along. So we like it a lot. The problem is, is the shelf life. 
Um, the University of Washington did a biological test. They had 100 samples set in, 92 of which arrived DOA. They had no bugs alive. And it, it comes down to having air for aerobes and the time frame that they're on the shelf. We think that we're good for up to 60 hours, maybe a po um, at most 72 hours, but in some cases, um, we'll just take half a batch and then keep the others with air source to try and keep as many alive as we can. So it's the kind of thing you can't ship this product in. I'm always a little leery and skeptical, I guess, of a lot of products that are shipping long distances and and they, uh, they say, yeah, those bugs are still alive. I mean, these are live living beings and they need, for the most part, most of them need oxygen. But we've had really good results with it. We've used it in a number of different ways. Uh, we use it in furrow, uh, we use it foliar, and then we use it uh, in our residue digester. The, some of the things to remember though is these are sensitive little bugs. If there's 50 billion in a milliliter or more, uh, they do not like acids, which 1034O uh, and 28% nitrogen are acids, and they will kill the bugs 80 to 100%. Roundup, on the other hand, only kills 25%. But if you get rained out and you've got a tank that's got the, uh, the compost in it with uh, Roundup in three days, it'll kill the Roundup. It destroys all the efficacy of the Roundup. It just turns it into dirty water. So it gets back at it. The ones that are living, they get their revenge. But we, we like this product. Like I said, uh, in some of the tests that we've run, it's a little hard to say when we're using in furrow because we actually do use a total of about 10 products in furrow in our totally tubular on the planter. And then we use uh, some nitrogen products without tea, of course, in the two by two by two. When you're using this product, uh, where we've used it in foliar applications. The original company was using it out in California and they were specializing in nuts and vegetables and uh, row crops out there. And their whole plan was to use about 25 gallons per acre per year. And we found that two gallons at a time is about a good ratio. I sometimes use two or three gallons and get three or four uh, applications in a year. Well, in the, the ones that we've been able to quantify, we had uh, some applications where we put two gallons the acre on soybeans at about uh, R3, and we got about a 9% bump. It cost us about 550 an acre plus application, and uh, we got about a 6.2 uh, increase on beans. So even counting for beans only being eight or nine dollars, you know, if I had a six dollar uh, application cost plus the, plus the spraying and I had a uh, $50 return. Anytime I can take five or six dollars and return 40, 50 dollars, I'm all over it, you know. That's, that's a good thing. I'm gonna shut this off. Uh, we're not seeing, uh, we aren't seeing microbes jump around because they're really hard to see. I mean, uh, when our biologist uh, was looking at them under the microscope, he thought he could identify 350. So when we were able to do the DNA test and had over 4,000, that was a, an eye opener or a microscope opener sort of thing. We've had some interesting things with this. Uh, we've used it in a number of di different situations. Um, one of the most interesting, I think, is people called our office out on uh, Treasure Island and said that uh, this large estate of uh, Mrs. Steve Jobs, the oak trees were dying. So we sent some technicians out there, they did tissue tests and um, put together this witch's brew, part of which was this, uh, this compost tea, but then we're using some other products which are uh, concentrated seawater and some uh, seaweed products and then some other, uh, some other products that we put together. We're importing amino acids from Spain and we're getting uh, some products from Estonia and uh, some things from Israel and stuff like that. But and anyway, suffice it to say, they, they built this, this compost, this compound and injected it into the roots and three weeks later, the trees started leafing out again. Now they might've been gonna do that on their own, but we're gonna take credit for it because uh, it was pretty amazing to us.